How did the Rockets blast off in Game 2? Can the Warriors regroup and find their rhythm? What adjustments can be made by both teams? The only question left is, say it with me, you win. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to the B-Ball Breakdown live show slash podcast slash conversation about the NBA. Tonight we've got Dave Dufour NBA with me as always. And we just finished watching a shellacking by the, is it by the Rockets or to the Warriors? Who got shellacked? The Warriors got shellacked, right, Dave? The Warriors got shellacked. (laughs) Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. Well, listen, it's pretty good for the Rockets fans. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Hey, anytime you can get 60 points out of Eric Gordon, P.J. Tucker, and Trevor Ariza, you know, that's pretty amazing to win that game. And, and you know, the Warriors, I'm actually pulling up the uh, the box score right now. Um, the Warriors on the night had uh, – oh, where are they at? Uh, this box score – sorry, my box score app uh, messed up. Uh, how many turnovers did they have tonight? Who were the Warriors? The Warriors, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they only had, I want to say, 14 uh, – 15. 15, yeah. They had 11 in the first in the first half. Uh, it was like 20, 21% of their possessions. Uh, you know, they, they lost the ball. Well, you know, and you what? know what? It, it wasn't, oh, hang, hang on. Yeah. Before we even jump into it, analyzing the game. I mean, I really thought this series was going to be a sweep. I mean, the, the Warriors are the best team we've ever seen. And, uh, the Rockets just, you know, I thought they were going to be way too predictable as we saw tonight. They can change things up. You know, they pick the pace up. They, they moved the ball around a little bit better. Guys hit shots who hadn't been hitting shots, and that's super important. I mean, Eric Gordon, this is the first good game he's had in the playoffs, and he's very important for this team. So one of the things I said all year was that the Rockets have a shot because of guys like Eric Gordon and his ability to get hot. And if this is the Eric Gordon we're going to get, we might actually get a six- or seven-game series. I still think Warriors are going to close this out now in five. But, uh, yeah, I was very wrong, I guess, I mean, because you're either right or wrong. Um, yeah, I was wrong about my sweep. Yeah, we got uh, somebody in the comments saying that uh, I was going to take it two shots to Jack dealing with the loss. You know what? I, I called it, I think I said seven. I don't remember if I said it in completely public forums, but I felt like it was going to go seven. And, you know, I think that we could definitely get there. Here's an interesting uh, adjustment I noticed in the very beginning was they finally put Ariza on Durant to start. And I, did I say that last time? Because I thought I did, and I certainly was thinking it, and that's what they should do. I said it somewhere, maybe on Twitter. We just we talked about it. Okay, so that was yeah. one good thing. I thought that worked well for them. Um, but yeah, the, the turnovers. Let's get back to that for one second. Um, they were so bad. It wasn't even like. So here's the question: Is did the Rockets f- make the Warriors play as badly as they played? That's the real crux of the matter here, right? So that's what's going to decide the series, because. I don't know. What do you think? No, I think, I mean, I think the Warriors did that thing that they always do where they get careless and sloppy with the ball. What what was uncharacteristic was how they played defense. They were, they were, I mean, it was trash. KD was just getting blown by going to the basket. You could see Draymond Green was visibly upset and he wasn't much better on the offensive end. I mean, he was also sloppy. So, you know, it's just one of those sloppy Warriors games. I think Steve Kerr, uh, between quarters even even said, you know, hey, we won game one, so uh, we get to come out and be lazy and sloppy in game two. <laughs> right. and like, you know, and, and that's not him. You know, he's not being cavalier about it. Like, I, I can tell that it kind of drives him nuts that this team does that, but this is what they do. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, you hope that they can come back. I mean, now that Houston's kind of found the rhythm and got some momentum going and, and got their role players involved, I mean, this this could be dangerous. It really could be. Uh, it could, yeah, absolutely. And that's that's all it takes is one game to kind of get them on track. Um, Curry, obviously, is, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say this out loud because, again, there's going to be people yelling and, and crying foul. But Curry is clearly not 100%. He's not even 90%. He is, he's ailing. Any any guard, Clay Thompson is going to get blown by on an island against uh, right. Kevin, Kevin uh, James Harden. It's just like that's going to happen anyway. Now you know, but but again, he, Curry didn't do himself any favors. He was out of position. He kept get lost. He would fall asleep on the weak side a little bit. It was kind of you know uncharacter- uncharacteristic in those aspects of his defense. So if people wanted to watch this game and give me an example of why Curry is a terrible defender, I, I can't I can't defend that. Today was not one of those games where he was focused. Now here's the guy that was really the biggest a wall in my mind, Clay Thompson. 
He yeah. didn't show up. He was off. He he couldn't dribble the ball. He couldn't like even handle it really well. There was something off with him. I don't know. Maybe he was, you know, self med whatever it was he was doing that he does. He was off. He looked out of it. And I think that without him, you know, and when you're talking about the role players going off, you know, well, you got to have Clay playing like a normal person. If not, then you can't win. Yeah, um, Clay was minus twenty four in in the game, and uh, and Steph was minus twenty, and they combined for twenty four points. Uh, again, th- those two guys were outscored by uh, uh, by uh, Eric Gordon by himself. Mm-hmm. Um, PJ Tucker had twenty two, a reason with nineteen. I, like again, this is this is the difference in the game is that Steph and Clay were terrible. Yeah. And those three guys were amazing for for the Rockets. Yeah. I mean, listen, PJ Tucker is not going to do that again. What he did, he was—I I don't know who that was out there, but he was—he—he he, he was like Durant, eight for nine from the field, like just all aggressive and going in the hoop hard. I mean, that was and then nailing shots with guys in his grill. So that's not going to happen again either, I don't think. Um, but you know, that's the that's the question. The problem now is for the Rockets is they are going to have to go and play an Oracle. That's not going to help them so much. So we know that like. Okay, the next two games, the Warriors already have one. I, I kind of already feel that way. I think I think you definitely you're already thinking they get two. Um, so that's the real question. And then which of the ones? Because you know, up two one is a is a different thing. Uh, you don't want to lose that fourth game at home. It's a real problem. Uh, that would be a problem going back into Houston to lose game five. So uh, I think this this is a series. I think we've got something here. Yeah, look, if the if the Rockets can earn a split, the Warriors have to feel really, really nervous because they're going to have to go win two more games in Houston. And, um, you know, you saw the crowd really show up tonight. And, and role players normally play better at home. And, you know, that's what we saw tonight. I don't know what happened yeah. to those guys in game one. They were not good. Um, you know, not this good, especially. But, uh, I mean, you tip your cap and, and you move on to game four. They've got – or game three. They've got four days between games. Um I'm sure that the Warriors are going to revamp and and come out and and play more within themselves. I mean, the difference between Steph Curry in Game One and Steph Curry in Game Two, it's not that he, he got any more healthy or less healthy. Uh, it's that in Game One he played like he was hurt, but played within himself. Right. And and in Game Two he must have. I, I think he must have been feeling good in warmups or something because he came out gunning. Took seven shots in the first quarter. It's very not like Steph Curry. I mean, a lot of these were out of rhythm. Yeah. He wasn't getting into the flow of the offense, and they looked disjointed, throwing the ball away. So he he may have felt too comfortable. Yeah, and, uh, and I don't expect to see that in Game Three. I think he'll play a much more reserved, uh, conservative style like he did in Game One. I mean, when you, when you've got Kevin Durant, like why not go for that? You right. know, why not just let let him carry the load? I mean, he wound up doing it anyway, and, and so you know you've got that luxury. So just, just play off of him. Yeah, uh, I think it'll be a much better much better result. I'm not really happy with the way the Warriors run their offense either way. They were just, they were not moving the ball very well. They were not cutting. It became a lot of ISO. It, it became what the Rockets did. And the Rockets started going up and down really fast. And of course, I got on Twitter saying, you know, uh, they're going to, the Rockets will lose this game if they're going to try and do that. But I have to tell you, that entire first half was too fast for the Warriors. They looked like they couldn't handle the speed. And that was what was going on with the unforced turnovers. And that was what it was. You know, the it wasn't even the number of turnovers. It was the way they were turning it over. Literally just unforced, you know, not looking like they had any purpose or what they wanted to do. And an uncharacteristic to some degree. Uh, the Clay Thompson stuff, I didn't, I, you know, you could he doesn't handle the ball that well. So it's not that surprising. But either way, um, what, do you, what do you think about the refereeing tonight? Um, I thought it was okay. I, I honestly like not a whole lot stood out to me. I mean, they, you know, uh, both teams kind of get away with some flopping here and there. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, th- there's a lot of contact. I will say, you know, early on, there was a ton of contact that was going uncalled. Um, but I, I thought the refereeing was was fine. What about you? Yeah, I mean, there were a, a few calls that were a little head scratching. I do feel like um, if I look at it again, I'll check. But it did seem like the Warriors... And maybe it's just, you know, typical on the road treatment uh, probably weren't getting anything going to the basket uh, when they went to the basket. I don't think they got any calls. And it, it, a couple of times it, I raised an eyebrow. Not, nothing, nothing serious. And then but, but certainly on the other end, it felt like the Rockets were, you know, if they got into the lane, <laughs> there was going to be a call. Now, of course, well, actually, I have the stats on that. I, I looked at halftime because I felt the same way. OK. And the Warriors at the rim had had zero fouls drawn and the Rockets had had four. So there you go. Yeah. Wait. What do you mean? Only four? 
Four fouls drawn at the rim. That was at halftime. I, oh, I didn't, at the rim. I didn't right. Okay. That. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah, I mean, there was something there. And, again, that could very well be in the parameters of being at home and whatever. But, you know, there's a lot of pressure here <laughs> to to have as long of a series as possible. So they don't want to have to deal with, um, you know, uh, going – you know, it, again, if the Rockets went down to, to love – Losing both games at home, you're right. The series would be over. This was a make. This was a do or die game for the Rockets, and they did what they needed to do. So, um, but again, I don't think either of us feels that concerned right now about the Warriors. But again, you know, some of the methods of what happened out here are, would be concerning. Um, they, what they do need to change, though, is the way they're guarding. You know, obviously they're, they're trying to still force Steph Curry to guard Harden, and I don't like what they're doing. Curry is was really physical uh, with the with the ball handler or the the guy setting the ball screen in game one, but now he was sort of like hedging high, and that's supposed to be so he doesn't have to switch, and yet he would still switch anyway. So they need to figure out a different method for that, and if it's even like maybe giving Harden a chance to shoot a three by kind of going under, I think maybe that's what I would take my chances with again in, in, uh, with him on the road. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think going back to the things they were successful with in game one would be important. Uh, number one is just do not turn the ball over. You've got to you got to value every possession against a team like Houston because Houston does value every possession. They don't turn the ball over a ton. They're scoring. I mean, tonight I think they were somewhere up between like one, like they were like one point two five points per possession. They value each possession, and the you know the Warriors they go. We've seen this before. This is not the first time we've seen them get sloppy and get kind of cute with the mm-hmm. basketball, and they they just can't do that because Houston is too good for that. You know, Houston is probably like the best team that they face in this run, uh, outside of those OKC, the Durant OKC teams. Um, you know, they they can't play around with them. I mean, despite the fact that I thought it was a sweep, it didn't mean that I think that the Rockets are just garbage. It's just that the Warriors are the best team ever assembled. So uh, <laughs> they did not play like that tonight. So let, I, let's see let's see what's happening. I think it's funny in the comments we're looking at that someone uh, just said. Uh, that's about what you're supposed to get from Tucker, Ariza, and Gordon, which is what, like, what, 60 points, whatever you said. Yeah, and then two, two comments down, then Ben Luxon's like, career games from Gordon and Tucker. Uh, I, not necessarily from Gordon. Gordon can go off and do that, but the other guys, for sure. Um, and then, you know, some guys are like, this is an ugly game. Other people are saying it was an amazing to watch. Uh, it was just kind of disjointed. I don't think it was a really good game, per se. It was a blowout, pretty much, from the beginning, uh, really. Uh, even though they, you know, they were, by, and by the way, after all of that the Warriors were down like 12 you know early in the fourth quarter I think I even DM'd you I'm like are they gonna steal this like they actually had a chance and 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 they blew a couple of wide open shots that would have gotten under 10 and then all of a sudden sphincteritis kicks in so um you know if I were a Warriors fan I don't think it'd be you know I'd be that down but um we'll have to see I I guess it's kind of like in horse you got to prove it right yeah, got to. I mean, look, we could we could go on and on and on about the things that the Warriors were bad at tonight, but I think the more important takeaway from this is that the Rockets actually were better at stuff. Yeah. And that is important going forward because if they're going to if they're actually going to have a chance in this series, that's tonight was a blueprint of how they have to play. They got to move the ball when the opportunities present themselves and those role players have to hit shots. And it, and I mean, they have to hit shots at like a 50% rate. Right. That, that's what it takes. They, if they can't hit 50% of their threes, the role players, good luck. Right. Now, what did you make of Eric Gordon coming in, you know, three minutes into the game for P.J. Tucker is that quickly? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think it's smart. Maybe they were just looking to get him rolling early when, you know. Yeah, when they had an opportunity. I, I mean, I because I didn't like what was going on with with uh, Tucker. Now I'm kind of forgetting exactly what it was. I know I put it in my mind um, because you know with Ariza on Durant that changed things. They don't they don't need Tucker in there. Then they certainly went like even smaller that way. It, you could you could argue that it did ignite some stuff. I mean, they did some other uh, early subs too. Chris Paul came out. I think a little earlier than normal. I don't remember exactly what the Rockets' normal stuff is, but Chris Paul came out with uh, you know just under seven minutes to go in the first quarter too. So D'Antoni got right to the bench quickly, um, and whatever he did, <laughs> it certainly ignited some stuff for them. I mean, uh, you know, it's interesting. It was only um, you know it was let's see, eighteen all, uh, you know, three minutes left in the first quarter. So that game was right there for both teams and, uh, up until the end of the first quarter. Yeah, hey, one thing to watch, uh, you know, over the next couple of days, I'm, I'm really curious about the progress reports that we get on Chris Paul. Yeah, 
Seem seem to be having some issue with ankle or Achilles or something like or that. Calf. Uh, um, calf. Yeah. So I'm really curious as to what's going on with him because obviously Houston can't afford to lose him. Oh no. And and he even though he looked gippy, he still made a couple or at least one shot in my mind that was amazing. But if it's a calf, you know, that thing could get tight and then it could be a problem. But luckily for them they have a lot of days off here uh to do whatever treatment they need to get him healthy again. And so I don't think I don't know. It looked like he would probably be okay. I'd be surprised if it would be anything lingering. Um how healthy is Curry and is it going to affect the series going forward? Uh is what uh Alice Hole twenty one asks. Uh what percentage do you give Curry? I mean, again, we're gonna get reamed for this, but what do you think he is? Yeah, I don't know. I honestly like I, I'm tired of litigating this already. Like okay. if, if if people don't want to accept the fact that the guy's coming off a knee injury, like there are people out there that think you can have a grade two sprain of your knee and just because you're on the basketball court, you're you're back to normal. And honestly, like I'm tired of arguing this point. It's stupid. It's a dumb argument. It's like when Marcus Smart sprains his ankle and he comes back five days later, oh well he's healthy. No, he's not. Like and, and if, if people are just gonna continue to be obstinate about how these these basketball players deal with injuries like I'm not going to have this conversation it right. really is it's so frustrating to deal with like it's one of the most frust- frustrating parts about analyzing basketball because you know and I know that these guys come back from injury and they come back too soon because that's the nature of the of the, of the game that's the nature of competitive sports you know guys are always itching to get back a, a grade 2 sprain of your knee should take three months minimum. So, and for some guys, it takes six. Yeah. So yeah. we, I, I can't, I can't guess. He's playing. He's playing to me. Looks, I don't know. He looks a step slow. Yeah. So whatever we call that, eighty percent. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, his jumper's off. But I think that he's forcing it. Okay. Well, we know what. Okay, we, we'll move on. We have some numbers here in the comments that we could share. Uh, ben Luxon tells us that Nick Young has made more threes in these last two games than Steph Curry. Which you know, Nick Young is a good is a shooter, but I don't even think we expected him to play at all. And he's actually getting real minutes in these games, which is weird. He had the best defensive sequence in the Warriors that I've seen all season long uh, against Harden. Yeah, although maybe second only to what Draymond Green did on Eric Gordon, but Eric Gordon actually hit the shot, so that was crazy. Uh, but we have another one. First single digit game for Clay since January. That's from Granite OX. So again, like we mentioned earlier, Clay Thompson did not show up. He was not. Uh, he was not mentally all there. It looked like to me. He looked like he was out of it. Yeah, and, and again, missing shots is excusable, but the the defense was just. It was just bad. I mean, mm-hmm. there was one possession. I, I'm pretty sure. Did you put a uh, tweet the video where he just completely blew his assignment? And no one and everyone just quit. It's on about, the Warriors. I about Curry getting beat back door. No. Yeah. Uh, going to the left. I mean, I think I tweeted that one out. From, yeah. From the from the left wing going to the hoop. Oh no. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't I'll know. See if it's on your timeline. I think Either that way. you did. But yeah. I, either way, it's just stuff that you don't. It's uncharacteristic, especially right. for Clay Thompson. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. On Clay's part. Yeah. I don't know if I did that one, but yeah. It was. I mean, they were all like that. It's and it, it, it happens with this team. We've seen it. And and I guess from a Warrior standpoint, you got to hope it doesn't happen more than once, and it doesn't you know happen more than once in a, in a series. Uh, and it probably won't. So uh, let's see. It's gone. It's gone. one is a first time listener. Hello. Nice to see you on there in the in the uh, comments. If you have any questions, make sure to post them up here in the comment section of the Periscope while we answer these. We're going to kind of go to those a little bit more as we kind of make this one a little shorter tonight. I feel like uh, keep the energy going. Uh, now, how about this? JaVale would make them miss those shots at the rim. Uh, this is what uh, the silky something else is saying. Um, now, Looney has been that guy and done nicely. But do you think that JaVale maybe should have gotten a shot to see if he could have helped get some stops? I think JaVale should have gotten those David West minutes. Uh, David West was just, I mean, he was really bad. And he, he hasn't been he hasn't been great for the last few months. So, um, you know, I think at least give it a shot. Get some get some rim protection in there. Yeah. I mean, West missed a couple easy ones. He, you know, he went two for four in six minutes. It's not terrible. But um, he got no rebounds, by the way. That's actually interesting. No rebounds, no assists, no, no nothing besides a couple fouls and a couple baskets. So uh, another one of those things where it's indicative. He, he came right in. He missed like a layup or some really easy shot. Um, just indicative of what was going on. And again, we have to decide whether that is the Warriors doing it to themselves or if the Rockets had something to do with those things. Uh, it's got to be a mixture of both. Uh, so you give credit to the Rockets for sure. But again, some of the turnovers, man. Uh, yeah. Is it possible that outrunning the Warriors is one way to beat them? That's what uh, Demore Z- Udi says. I, before tonight, I would have said absolutely not. That's not the way you're going to beat them. Um, 
it certainly looked that way if you wanted to use this game or this first half, right? You have to say that they the, the Rockets beat them at their own game. Well, I think if you've got an elite offense like the Rockets do and you're able to outrun them, then yeah. I mean, it, that's that's huge. And, and getting, you know, I mean, it's a possession battle, right? So if you've got a great offense and you get more possessions, you're going to score more points and put yourself in position to score. And in particular on a night like tonight where the Warriors are throwing the ball over the place, you speed their game up and they're going to make more mistakes. That's what we saw in the first half. Yeah. Um, what happened to Ryan Anderson, asks Eric for three bang. It's a good question. Defense? Well, I mean, yeah, it's defense. I mean, he, he got he had the injury and, and then, you know, they decided to start P.J. Tucker and, you know, yeah. it just works better. I mean, so, that's yeah. what it is. He no, can't really play in this series. Yeah, and there's no question that the P.J. Tucker thing, as he got better and, and fit in with the offense better, they're going to use him no matter what. Because he, you know, certainly tonight he gave them Anderson role minutes on offense all night long, probably better than Anderson. And uh, and he can really lock down on defense. That guy is a, I mean, that guy is their answer to Draymond Green, but he's just, you know, a little too short to be as effective. But uh, he certainly has the mindset of a Draymond Green too. So it's a really great pickup for them. John Johnson says, can we talk about the Bucks after breaking down this game? Uh, you want to do a 30 second bucks take? Um, I Are they mean, hire? it's nice. They, they hired Mike Budenholzer. When? Today. Oh, I've been, you know, in editing hell. So breaking news. Okay. Oh, wow. So yeah, we, they oh, hired did we just break that. Yeah, no, <laughs> right. we didn't break it, but Damn. I broke it to you. Okay. Um, yeah. So they hired Budenholzer. Um, you know, it'd be cool to see Giannis playing in a, in a system and, uh, yeah. You know, I, I think that one of the nice things about Bud is that he's not uh, he's not rigid in his ways. He's quite flexible as a coach. I mean, he, he changed from one of the more aggressive pick and roll schemes to one of the most conservative pick and roll schemes this year, all in one season. And, you know, compared to what the Bucks were doing under their previous head coach, that's an improvement. OK. And just so you settle down out there, I'm, I'm not high. And I'm not sure why I'm working on a time machine. Is that like a hot tub time machine reference? I don't know. I have, I have no idea. But I'm not cutting my hair, so don't ask me. That's probably what's going on here. And I, I guess I'm going to shave at some point. So if you can't see me, listeners, I, uh, yes, I, I'm. It's, it's crazy. I've done 33 videos in 28 days or whatever it is, and I don't know. I don't even know who I am anymore. <laughs> so welcome to what this looks like when you work that hard. Um, but nonetheless, uh, coach is either getting a hat or doing another bump. See, like, what's going on here with this stuff? This is uh, this is embarrassing. Um, I'm not a Rockets hater. In fact, it's outrageous that anybody would say I'm. A, I'm, I'm like the biggest James Harden apologist of the in the NBA right yeah, now. Yeah, and and Mike D'Antoni, like, I don't know, man. Like, Mike D'Antoni is one of my favorite people in basketball. So I, I don't get it either. I like, I don't know, man. I don't have any bias. My bias is toward good basketball. That's one thing. But also, you know, I I, I watch all these games, and uh, you know. Yeah, I'm getting roasted right now for the for the Warriors sweep prediction, and that's fine. I know well, that's the nature of Twitter. Well, but, you know, uh, did you buy your plane ticket to Boston yet for some clam chowder? Hey, by the way, that's the greatest bet of all time. If you're gonna just life advice, if you're gonna make a bet, make sure that if you lose, you're doing something awesome, which is going yes. and eating clam chowder. Yeah, because well, my son is reminding me that I made a promise to think last year and I forgot what it was, but it, it, whatever it was was never going to happen and it did. And I was supposed to do a breakdown naked, and I just said, "Well, I'll I just need a few more weeks to train before I do that." So uh, who knows what's going to happen with that? But uh, or if I can get my, um, you know, what that mosaic thing going, is so we don't have to scare any little children. <laughs> Um, if Nene comes in and guards Kevin for four straight plays, I'm gonna oh I'm gonna slip my wrist. Okay, well we didn't see that, and Nene actually didn't even play tonight, did he? Maybe at the end. Um, um, I I don't know. I, I not anything meaningful. He did not play, and he actually gave them some decent minutes in the in game one. So that's it's you know it's weird how this happens, right? There, I don't really know if coaches come in with a huge game plan about who they're gonna play and when. It's got to be a lot of feel. And that's probably why you see a lot of coaches get reamed for doing that because, you know, it's they, it, it, it's hard to plan. I know I try to do that at a high school level. And, and then the sure thing, some guy gets in the foul trouble and within two minutes, the whole thing is blown up and you got to do it on feel again. So who knows? Um, any other good questions in the, in the comments? Uh, let's see here. Can you see anything? Are you uh, too far away from your screen? Um, why are the Warriors ISOing so much with Durant? That's from... Uh... Tony Harris films. Great question. 
Um, and, and I think the answer is they, it's just like a weird trap but like they got lured into. And there's no question that Durant's got some other agenda going on. I'm thinking of going against Harden. You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like Durant is trying to put some sort of imprint of his own stamp on this on this series. And I feel like it's going a little bit against obviously what the Warriors want to do. Do you feel that way? Um, I don't know, a little bit, but I think also when when the chips are down and, and your teammates aren't doing you know what you expect out of them and you're able to score in isolation. I mean, if it wasn't for Durant scoring in isolation, yeah. they're not in this game, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, and it, by the way, is it is it like because the defense is pushing up and putting pressure, and so all of a sudden the cutting isn't moving, and, the, and you can't pass across the perimeter as easy? Like, yeah, sort of. But then again, I've I've never quite understood it, even on at any level, when you know just because they are pressuring you doesn't mean you stop and you don't move, and that's what we see sometimes. I guess it's a normal reaction to some degree when you get pressure in your face like that, but uh, I, I doesn't I don't know. It's weird to me that that's a reaction. Uh, and I can't imagine it's going to happen again. I, I have to imagine that Kerr is going to be a little bit more uh, controlling of the offense. I, I would suspect he's going to call like some more sets, maybe even live as they're going down the court, which he probably never does, uh, just to get them into actions that will get them moving. Yeah. Uh, I've got some stats for you, by the way, from, okay. uh, from uh, our guy, Positive Residual, All on right. Twitter, uh, courtesy of The Ringer. Um, Trevor Reza, Eric Gordon, and PJ Tucker combined for 68 points on 38 shooting possessions. That's efficient. They also, the three of them also only committed one turnover. That's incredible. What a what an incredible game. Yeah. For those three guys. It was amazing. You're right. So imagine, like, you know, and by the way, you know, in the face of all that, and if the Warriors hadn't turned it over as badly as they did, and in my opinion, some of that is unforced. And again, I don't want to take any any credit away from the Rockets and what they were doing, but you know, who knows what happens, you know, uh, if those don't happen. But then, whatever they happen, woulda, coulda, shoulda, prada. Um, can the Rockets' role players play that well again? Asks Chance Walters. Five. Uh, I know, right? Is that the answer? I don't. I don't know how anybody could play better. Than that. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, like I mean, it was, it was incredible. If they do again, if they could play like that every game, well, then the Houston Rockets are going to win the NBA fi- uh, championship. Right. Well, yes, that's true. Um, and we'll have to find out they can. I mean, that was it was just a performance. It was one of those all time things. And you know, I even tweeted out like when that ben, when Ben Gordon or sorry Ben Gordon Eric Gordon hits that step back three on Draymond after the great defense. You know, I was like the basketball gods have deemed this is the game. This is the Rockets game. And I funny because the Rockets fans were like yelling at me as if like that was an expected shot to go in. I, I just I don't know. I think that was it was just one of those things. It was in the air for a lot of those shots. Uh, again, is it replicable? I don't know. Um, yes. We got a good question. Okay. Um, from OG triple three. Uh, what do you think about the Rockets ability to guard the death lineup? I, um, okay. So this is something, I mean, this has been a thing, but Andre Iguodala being scared to shoot is killing Mm -hmm. what they do with the death lineup because they're just helping off of him the entire time. I honestly think they'd be better off with Looney or JaVale McGee or, you know, whoever, uh, but even Livingston, but somebody who is not scared to put the ball at the basket, throw it at the basket. Yeah. Iguodala doesn't want to shoot anywhere. He doesn't want to shoot threes. He doesn't want to shoot at the basket. He doesn't want to shoot free throws. It's a problem. It's a huge problem. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. I'm looking at the stats right now, the lineups, just to see if um, I can get a handle on I don't know if they have – uh, oh, they got both games in here already. Wow, look at that. Uh, I'm just kind of curious. The death lineup, um, you, know what, you know what the net, the net rating is right now? Hamptons 5 for two games? Yeah. What is it? Negative 14.9. That sounds about right. Yeah. Now, the second most played lineup is plus 50.3, and that's with Kevon Looney in there uh, instead of Iguodala. So that, that, that's interesting. Now, they've only played 14 minutes in two games. It's like he's really ridden the Hampton Five. And that's probably the other clear, clue here for him is he's going to have to try and mix that up a little bit, I would think, and break it up. Uh, obviously, you know, the Rockets are doing a really great job because they can go small. I didn't think it was going to work so well. Um, and, and I think part of the thing was P.J. Tucker wasn't fitting into that against them, in my mind. Going to Eric Gordon seemed to do something as well. So uh, th- I think we're going to start seeing even smaller and smaller lineups, too. I feel like we're going to, right? This, this was why I, I didn't think Capello was going to play much in, in the series. Because I assumed P.J. Tucker 
would be getting the majority of the minutes at the five. Right. I thought we were going to see just a lot of really, really small lineups. And, and, you know, maybe, I mean, the Warriors, I think, could go probably without playing anyone aside from Looney if they really wanted to. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think, I think we're going to see that. I think they're going to go, you know, at both teams, it's going to go smaller and smaller to see what happens. And it's, again, a glimpse into the future of the NBA and how that's going to be played. Um, so we'll see. But, Dave, this is a great show. Let's, keep the, let, let's, let's leave them wanting more. What do you say? Yeah, we're, we're back Sunday night. Yeah. Oh, so it's a big break. Is that right? Oh, because we're not going to do Saturday just because it's a uh, Saturday is a really tough night to get anything done later at night. So we'll be back here to do uh, which way. Which game is Sunday? Is that this game? Is this series? Western it Conference? is this series. Great. Yeah, but we'll, we'll break down both. Right. Yeah, so we'll be we'll be here right after that game. So make sure you stay tuned with us. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, I'll have a good breakdown of this thing tomorrow. And then uh, guess what? Euroleague. We're gonna get some stuff out there uh, coming up in the on the off days. So final four. Man, yeah, coming st- up. Stay tuned for the final four. I got a spotlight on a sp- certain player that's been dominating in the playoffs so far. So um, that's it. Thank you guys for coming in here and joining us and asking such great questions and 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 being a little bit kinder to us if you're a Rockets fan than you could have been. So then you would then other people have been. So. Uh, again, Dave, thanks for coming on the show. And don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You in? You in, Dave? Yes, I am.